cold weather is ending and spring begins, but unfortunately we're learning in a hurry that the gun violence in our city, it's far from seasonal. I'm Bill Anderson, and we continue our search for solutions, accountability, and progress in our battle to save our streets. Tonight we focus on the fact that it's up to all of us to make a difference, and Jeff Cole starts with a candid conversation with District Attorney Larry Krasner on his office and their responsibilities to make our streets safer. We've got 100 plus murders. The people look at the police and they look at the prosecutor. Tell me what you think of that number and where we're going throughout this year. We are dealing with the worst spike in gun violence over the last two, now almost two and a half years that we have seen in a very, very long time. I think it's awful. I mean, obviously every homicide is awful, but the numbers are very upsetting. It's the kind of thing that keeps us up at night. Our discussion with District Attorney Larry Krasner began with a focus on the grinding, unrelenting gun violence plaguing Philadelphia. On the day we sat down, there were 103 homicides, one more than last year. Are we going to outstrip the horrific homicide numbers of last year at 560 at the end of 2022? The truth is I don't know. But I will say this, you know, from, from the beginning, what we have seen is that it was about 1.5 homicides per day in Philadelphia during the period of the pandemic. Um, right now, right now, we're very close to where we were last year. I mean, the terrible news is we're close to where we were last year. The good news is we're not twice as high. Krasner, elected and re-elected on a platform of criminal justice reform that rejects what he calls mass incarceration, holds firm to his argument that funding prevention efforts will lower crime. The more we put into prevention, which does mean you take money away from stupid. Stupid is putting homeless people in jail and spending $60,000 a year to do it when you could take those $60,000, put it into public education, summer camps, treatment, all these other things that are much more effective. So why, though, is the perception something different? It isn't. It that, is. No, it, it is. isn't. No, it is. Jeff, no, it's yes. not. Yes, no, it, is. it isn't. I'll tell you how oh, I know you it know. Is. I mean, come on, you can no, walk out there and, and folks will say, yeah, Krasner's doing a good job, and others will say, no, nope, no, nope, he lets them walk. A small number will. Here's the reality. Well, what the institutions don't get, and this also includes not you, but this does include the media, what they don't get is that progressive prosecutors are being elected and reelected all over the country. On guns, Krasner argues making arrests for possession of a gun without a permit will not dramatically lower gun violence. The notion that the way you're going to solve shootings is arresting people for guns is missing the point. The way you solve shootings is arrest people for shootings. The way you solve homicides by gun is by solving homicides by gun. There's been a real problem trying to solve those. If you can't solve them, how, how do you get anywhere? Forensics. I mean, the, the fact is the city is decades behind on having the capacity to do a lot of forensics. Krasner argues on the gun cases police solve and bring to his office, his track record of prosecution is strong, but believes in Philly, guns flow like water. The most important question is how have we done on our shooting prosecutions? How have we done on our uh, gun homicides? And we're doing extremely well on both of them. You know, that has to be the meat and potatoes of what you're trying to do. For every gun that is taken off the street, according to data from the AG's office and also data from the PPD, there are either two or three more guns purchased legally in the same time period. On the problem of witnesses and victims of crime failing to testify against their attackers? Fear is a factor. And the pandemic has made it worse because cases take a lot longer to conclude. So the potential for intimidation or the potential for fear of intimidation is out there. That's, that's a real factor. If a, if a witness doesn't show three or four times, which I think it's just a three or four times, is that fear or is that, I don't care, I'm it, not it coming? No, it depends. I mean, sometimes it's a friend or a family member who was angry enough uh, at the time they called the police to say this person has a gun or this pointed a gun but feels differently later. Krasner says his office emptied the till of money it had to relocate victims of crime, but even after receiving more funding, it's a challenge. Do you have enough? Can you take somebody out of their community in North Philly and put them someplace where they're not gonna be threatened? Is there enough around for that? Enough money for that? The, the average cost of relocation is usually something like $30,000 for what we do here. It's, you know, it's very, it's, 
is very difficult. And it, and it, it so how many people can you move at 30,000 a head? Not a ton. With his view that education, improved housing, and slowing evictions can be crime-fighting tools, D.A. Krasner has battled a perception he is soft on crime. We pressed him on a view we've heard from some cops on the street. If I were to say to you that come, some cops say, you know what, I'm not going to make arrests here because my perception is Krasner's going to let them out, what would you say to that? I'd say they should be locked up because that's a crime. Yeah. You, you know, do you I'm, think that's do you think that's out there in some way? I, I know that it's out there with some of them, but I will tell you this: that is criminal activity, and don't let me catch them doing it because they're going to have a problem.